Greetings, this is Captain Kilo of the USS Avro. Today we are running through the Kobarashi Maru. So, that is a 50 point Federation ship versus three Klingon ships worth 80 points. So let me just run through the cards we've selected for today's game. We have the USS Enterprise from the animated pack with a stat line of 3143. However, we're going to boost that up to a 3144. Uh, its action bar is evade, target lock, scans and battle stations. Its action is uh, one of my favorite because I'm all about health and durability as a player. Um, is repair up to three shields on this ship as an action. No disable, no discard, just action repair. It's not even a once per game. So this is about as good as an action repair uh, ability as you can get for the game. Comes in at 20 points, which is pretty good. Uh, it has, um, now it lacks a tech slot, which is not the greatest, in my opinion, but um, there are ways around that. But it does have a wonderful, <laughs> it, it, aside from the fact that it's missing a tech slot, it is a very wonderful uh, load up bar of one weapon and four crew. And the whole way I've designed this ship is around being as durable as possible and trying to shrug off as much damage as I can. So it's not so much about evading like my Oberth builds. This is more about how much damage can I cancel using crew combos in a single turn. And some of this feels just wrong, but uh, I'm going to see what I can do. All right. So uh, the CO I have here is Tim Waters from the Valiant. He's a four skill elite talent, although I don't, and um, we're actually going to make use of that elite talent. And three points. He adds a additional crew slot onto the ship, so now we're talking uh, five crew. And as an action, he can remove all disabled uh, upgrade tokens from your crew upgrades. So that is Fan Dabidozi, because that is going to be the crux of my um, build here. Oh, and I'm playing solo, and I, I do that most of the time I usually play solo, just so you know. Um, but I'm not pulling my punches on this build. Because uh, my Klingon cards are selected to destroy this build, pretty much. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Klingons can kill this build in, by round two. Alright, so, his elite talent is uh, Legacy of the Name, Ship Unique, three points. And this comes from the animated pack again. It can only be equipped to a unique ship, which is, I think, a... We should have more cards in the future that say can only be equipped to a generic or only equipped to a unique, because I think that's an interesting uh, differentiator. It can only be used on a Federation ship with a Federation captain. Free action. Place three time tokens on this card. Perform a battle stations action or an evade action as a free action. If this card is equipped to a ship with Enterprise in its name, you may perform this action as a free action instead. Oh, you may perform any available free action instead. So that, that right there is, this card isn't really necessary for the build, but it's going to be useful. Because in addition to trying to, I, I think I've tried the Kobarashi Maru or similar knockoff scenarios before, um, and uh, you run into the problem of trying to rescue the ship, is you just die. So my strategy is going to be try to kill all the Klingon ships first, and then rescue the ship. All right, so moving on to our next upgrade. We've got Systems Upgrade from the Hood. Uh, one of the best cards in the game in my opinion, or at least one of my favorite for how I play. Uh, fill any slot on your bar. So this actually fills our weapon slot, our ship's weapon slot. Uh, then add a tech slot. You increase your shield value by one. So now the Enterprise is a 3144. And this upgrade may only be purchased for a Federation ship, and no ship may have more than one, you know. And that's only two points. So you get a slot, which I personally value at two points, and a shield, which uh, is traditionally valued at two points. So really, it's it's it pays for itself if you use the tech slot. And we do, because we have a tech upgrade here called Exocomp! Yay! Exocomp! Exocomp is from the 2014 starter. 2017 star starter, sorry. I think it's 2017 starter. It's it's the Civil War starter. And uh, so its its card is paper fifth in and feels more like it's a... Uh, uh, planning phase plays two 
uh, time tokens on this card. It's a four point card. And repair one damage on the ship's hull. So, already, we're starting to see some of that durability come in with the systems upgrade and exocomp. System upgrade to give me an extra shield, exocomp to repair any any hull. Um, and we have four hulls, so we could probably survive one attack. Maybe two! Without shields. Uh, <laughs> not quite sure, though. Um, but here is where we get into our our meat and potatoes. Balana Torres, four points. She is from the Delta Flyer expansion, one of the best expansions in the game, in my opinion. Uh, when defending during the compare result step, you may disable this card and one of your active shields to cancel one hit or one critical result. So. We're going to be making use of those four shields because we're not going to be stopping shots with it. We're going to be disabling Bas Balana. Uh, but you have to disable her. But it's not a once per turn. It's sort of a given once per turn because she's disabled. But what if you have a card like, oh, I don't know, three point Beverly Crusher from the Enterprise E, at which point um, you can disable her instead, meaning you can use Balana twice if you have the shields. If one of your other crew upgrades is supposed to be disabled for any reason, you may disable this card instead. And it also has a discard one, but we aren't discarding cards here, so we don't need to worry about that. Then we have Christine Chapel from the Animated Pack. She is uh, similar to Beverly, but she has a little more flexibility. However, she only works during the planning phase. So uh, this will not help me uh, repair damage during combat, but... Um, it will help me if something happens to Tim Waters to sort of uh, re-enable some of the cards. And with her, you can disable her or put three time tokens on her to remove a disabled or time tokens, any number of time tokens, from a crew upgrade. After that, we have a card that I don't know if I've ever run. I may have run it once. Uh, and that is the Hathaway Wharf. Uh, or I think it's, yeah, the Hathaway Wharf. Uh, he's five points. When you're defending, when you're defending, you can disable him. If you do, the attacking ship rolls one fewer dice and cannot use any battle stations or target locks for quality. Um, and I may roll full de defense in spite of a scan. Now that's not going to be a problem because I'm fighting Klingon ships and I don't really use any scan upgrades for them. But he is going to be sort of a backup Bolana. So like you know, if Bolana doesn't work. Um, then I, like, maybe I've run out of shields or something. Or Balana has been disabled and all of my, both uh, Beverly and Christine are disabled or something. Uh, then I can rely on Worf to boost me up even more. Uh, and then finally, we have a card that I didn't initially think I was going to put on this build. But I thought, what the heck, may as well. Because it's probably going to appear on David Montgomery's build. Let's be honest. <laughs> We've got Hood Riker! Woo! For those who are unaware, Hood Riker is, or at least at one point in time, was the best defense card for the Federation. Each time you roll, roll plus one defense dice. That is cool. Um, so our one defense becomes a two defense. That's not great. But, um, and you may convert all your battle stations into evades if your captain is disabled, which unfortunately I don't have anything that can do that. And I don't think the Klingons are rocking anything that will either. Uh, you get to roll plus two defense, and you may convert up to two. So yeah, you convert one battle stations if it's not disabled. Uh, and so that's the gist of the, the, uh, the Federation build. So, yeah. On to the Klingon. So let's pass this off to the Klingon here. Um, so, uh, what do you have for us today? Today we have the Ikeas Kulaths. When attacking, if the ship is... Well, first off, let's just get this out of the way. We're flying D7s. Only D7s. Those have a stat bar of 31332. Except for generics, which are a 1. They come in in all flavors of prices, including 16 for the Koloths, 18 for the Goroth, and 11 for the Generic. <laughs> when attacking, if this ship is cloaked, which it shall be, this ship rolls plus one attack dice, bringing it up to a four. 
when attacking if this ship is not within the primary firing arc of the defending ship. Convert one battle stations into one critical, and all other battle stations into hits! Who even needs secondary weapons when you've got an ability like that? Our stat bar is attack, weapon, and a crew. For the captain, we've selected a dual faction card, an interesting choice for faction pure, but still technically by the rules. This is Mirror Core from the Calvin Timeline Faction Pack. Set up, choose an opposing ship. Well, I don't think that'll be very hard to make at the session. <laughs> We'll obviously select the Enterprise. When attacking the Enterprise, the ship may roll plus one attack dice and convert two battle stations into hits. That is a lot of redundant battle station conversion. Now we're talking about a five dice attack. <laughs> when defending against the chosen ship, and who even needs to defend, he'll be dead by round one. This ship may roll plus one defense and convert up to two battle stations into evade. So, while cloaked, our ship will in fact be rolling six defense dice. I am a captain of seven. Well, he is a captain of seven. I'm just an ambiguous voice! Ha ha ha! Alright, it appears that it's fine. Now, as for our elite talent we have today, is a good day to die! Five points, action! Discard this card. All ships may convert. It's into crits this game round. Now I've asked the Admiral to join us this evening, so we've got Gauron. It's quite a big block of text, then he's worth three points, plus zero skill, elite talent slot. I won't really go into what his ability is, but the basic gist of it is I can take a battle stations and get a free action out of it. On to our upgrades. We have the Klingon cloaking device. Klingon faction only one per ship. Two point dual faction mirror Klingon. When defending, if this ship is cloaked, convert one blank into one of aid. Place three time tokens on the. Oh, and a secondary ability is during the end phase, I can place three time tokens on this card to flip this token back to its green side. We have another dual faction. Klingon card here. Klingon only. If this ship is not in the primary firing arc of an opposing ship within range, flip its cloak back to its green side. One to two for range, cost two. So we've got a heavy hitter here, and it's got pretty good defense. If this was a one-on-one -on -one fight, I bet this could do it. On to our secondary vessel, the Gorath, coming in at 18.3132, evade target lock battle stations. Our upgrade bar for this is a tech weapon and a crew. Each time you defend at range one, roll one extra defense die. We've got Captain Col Koloth here. He is also a seven at four points with an elite talent slot. Each time an enemy attacks, You may force that ship to re-roll one attack dice of your choice. So, although he does not have a cloaking device, he has a considerable defense. His elite talent is Blood Oath. Klingon captain only, range 1 to 3, 3 points. Again, this is another massive block, to, block of text, but the basic gist of it is you roll some dice, and whoever rolls the most discards the other person's captain, or something like that. Basically, it's a captain killer, which is going to be good, because Tim Waters is the crux of the Enterprise's defense. So, now, on to the card, which will probably end this scenario in literally turn one or two, depending on how close the ships go. I play on a kind of small table, because they're... We literally don't own a table big enough in this house. Uh, <laughs> ah... Action! If your ship is not cloaked, disable all your remaining shields and discard this upgrade to target this ship. Well, target any ship at range 1 to 2. 
That ship must disable all of its remaining shields and cannot attack this round. Your ship rolls plus two dice. No, sorry. Rolls two less dice this attack round. Five points. So really, this is the thing that's probably going to kill the game in round one. However, if the Enterprise is able to get a shot off on the Gorath and take out its two shields, then, um... Wait, no, the Goroth can just perform this as an action before combat phase. Okay, alright, alright. So, if the Enterprise wants to stop itself from being killed, it needs to be at range 1 to 3 of the Goroth and take out its two shields before it has the opportunity to use this card. Alright, so that's the strategy he's going to use. So the Goroth is probably going to have to just beeline it straight for the Enterprise. <laughs> like a true Klingon! <laughs> alright. And we've got Magnetic Pulse. It's a weapon that shoots through shields. That's that's the basic gist of it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's five points. Uh, then we've got Toral, another defensive Klingon upgrade. Let's you convert uh, one battle station to out of eight. Uh, he's two points. Finally, we have the generic D7 battle cruiser at three one three one. Weapon crew evade target lock battle stations. Eleven points. We have the generic Klingon here who uh, it was from an episode of Voyager where they found the D7 battlecruiser off in the middle of the Delta Quadrant and he was the one who was all like, the Neret is killing us, we must kill the Voyager and take over the ship, yeah! Uh, honestly, we need a, a pack for that episode because that is actually like my favorite episode of all of Star Trek. <laughs> Alright, so that's the build. Yeah, yeah, that's the build. Um, so, we also have here, standing in for the Kobarashi Maru, we're still going to put the, the token on the bottom, but uh, we have the battle-damaged Oberth model. Uh, so, yeah! Uh, I don't think I'm going to, like, set up a camera or anything for this. I think I'm just going to, like, play-by-play -play explain what's going on. Um, but I actually need to go to sleep. Um, so, hopefully I'm going to play this when I wake up. Bye-bye! Oh, sorry, wait, no, uh, what do captains say? Bye-bye!